Hey everyone, um, I just want to show you a quick trick in Excel. I use this a lot and it is kind of the key to creating more dynamic, flexible, complex layouts in Excel. And it's a really simple concept. It is just simply dropping a text value or a number value into a shape that can then be dynamically updated and placed wherever you want on a page. So traditionally in Excel, we use the cell grid in the background, right? So if you drop in something, it's in a cell, and then you can add something to the cell next to it, so on and so forth. That's great. It's really nice when you're doing data processing. It's very well organized. It allows for complex cell references, all that kind of stuff. But it's not great when you're doing a, a visual layout, when you're trying to make something that looks cool. You know, it's, it, is, it is not akin to web development. It's akin to kind of, uh, I don't know, getting stuck in uh, painting with uh, paint by numbers or something like that. It just it doesn't give us enough flexibility. So instead what I do is point values that are inserted into a shape at a particular cell so that that number is actually transferred over. I can give the shape in a transparent background move around. So that's all a little confusing, but let me just show you what I mean. So let me insert, we're gonna go into our shapes icon or our shapes menu. We're gonna grab this text option and we're gonna drop it in. By default, you get a white background with an outline. We don't want either the background or the outline, so we're gonna remove both those. And now we've got this transparent, uh, this transparent box. So what we can do is we can go to the function, uh, we can go to the function section up here, just hit int equals, navigate to our value, Let's click it, enter, and then all of a sudden we have our value in this rectangle. Uh, we can then style it, let's make the font white, make it bigger, make it bold, uh, boom, we've got this cool metric. Now, here's the thing, we can move this wherever we want freely and style it however we want. We're not stuck using the grid layout anymore. We can do much more complex designs when we have the freedom to move a metric wherever we want it. This metric now will update dynamically. If I go back here and I change this value, you'll see it updates here. Super cool, right? Now, there are some complexities to this and some things to keep in mind. One is uh, always leave a little bit of trailing white space because if it's 100,000 this month, maybe it's a million next month and you're gonna need the extra space. And that allows us to have dashboards that are a little more flexible when our values change. Because if we just leave this much space, uh, and the moment that it gets above six figures, this whole thing's gonna break and not look great. So plan ahead a little bit, give yourself some white space around the um, around the metrics. The other thing to keep in mind is that if we change our cell reference, the styles are gonna get reset on this. So for example, if I move from C15 to D15, enter, you're gonna see that this is now reset to match the text style of the value that is already in D15, right? So this black text in the Calibri font. Um, and now I'd have to reset it, obviously do all the stuff, increase the size, uh, and make it bold. So it, it will dynamically update if you're not changing the cell reference. It'll dynamically update and keep the underlying shape styles. That's easy, it's not a problem. But if you change your cell reference, just be prepared that you're gonna have to reset the styles. If you want to avoid that and save yourself some time, you can actually change your font style here in your table. It's gonna look weird, but it will work. So we could actually, if we change these font styles, let's change it to what we were just using. Let's make it white, uh, size 32. Uh, obviously this is creating a weird table, but you'll see what I mean here. And it's actually, let me just go back here. Uh, we'll go to 28, that's fine. And now you'll see if we change our cell reference, it's gonna adopt the same styles that we have in there. So it's up to you how you wanna handle it. I have found that I'm not changing my cell references all that often in this case. If I'm pointing at a metric, that's where the metric lives. And that works for me. Um, if you have something where you're dynamically changing cell references though, make sure you style your text in the way that you actually want it to be on the front end of your dashboard. So that's the basic concept. That leads into all of the other things I do when I'm designing my dashboards like inserting transparent background charts, etc., which I'll get into later, but I hope that's helpful. And let me know what you're working on if you use this uh, trick.